Welcome back. Well, we've been reporting, and uh, Utah's been celebrating the Utes' crowning achievement in football. Of course, the Pac-12 championship and the trip now to the Rose Bowl. Now, leave it to our Craig Worth to tell us just how long of a road that has been all the way up to today. There was a time, he says, the team had a hard time getting players, and then the coach had to promise something. He told parents there would be no rough plays. Craig's taking us back to the beginning, and that is tonight's Worth Watching. Well, we know what football's like now here at the U. Oh boy, but 125 years ago, they could hardly field a team. In fact, you needed a note from your mommy to play, and a lot of mommies weren't letting their kids play. Indeed, the university papers said in some cases, students are placed under restriction by their parents, and of course are justified in refusing to play football. By 1902, the university had its current campus and a real team, and one guy even appeared to have a real helmet. The team started traveling by train and dressed up for the trip. They came back flushed with victory, according to the paper. Anyway, they also had a stadium by 1902. It was Cummings Field, and Utah had a coach from Michigan, Maddock, who apparently never gave up his Michigan sweater. Well, it still fit. Now Coach Maddock wanted mothers to know their kids would not get hurt. This 1905 Deseret News article assured all that Utah football is not brutal and dangerous plays are a thing of the past. It's a gentle game and it would never be a rough sport again. Well, but the early team faced some dirty tricks. Those darn Colorado folks made up lies. They said Brigham Young's grandson, George, spied on the secret Colorado practice as a Utah student. He had a Kodak and was trying to get some snapshots. Well, there was no George Young at the U. They claimed they threw him in the creek. Utah claims they just made it all up for publicity, but excitement is part of the game. Well, this is about where Cummins Field was located, and the idea was to get people excited about football. Well, university records tell us that a professor dressed up his son in red and silver and had him run up and down the sidelines yelling, go, go, go. So other fans started dressing up in red and they couldn't find enough silver, so they wore white. Kind of caught on, red and white. The media caught up in the excitement too. The Chronicle wrote in 1936, Arizonians, dopesters given jolt by hot youths in tough tussle. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds like real sports reporter talk. Well, by then, football games were now filmed. This is rare film of an early Utah game. Aw, oh, football works on film. Utah wasn't a national power, but fans were getting caught up in Utah fever. That's because newsreels started covering college football in Utah theaters. Presenting the sports final, the latest news from the world of sports. Scenes like this take place in almost every college in the country, big or little, and the campuses are buzzing with prophecies. Is Smith All-American material? Is Jones first man for tackle? What's the coach got up his sleeve this year? Oh, it got better. These fellows look like they've all got belly aches, but what they're learning is to hide the ball. If you could imagine hiding anything as big as a football. Now in sports, the football scores for today. First in the Skyline Conference, Wyoming 21 and Utah 7. Denver 14, BYU 7. Utah State 22 and Montana State 13. Well, that's kind of how it all happened. Television got bigger with football. More and more people showed up and more and more mommies wrote notes giving their kids permission to play. Craig Worth, ABC4 News. The mommy note, okay, thank you, Craig. The university's first season, by the way, was all the way back in 1892. The team went one and two that year. They lost to what is now Utah State, and uh, get this, they split a two-game series against the local YMCA. So a lot of history there. Uh, meteorologist 